Hello everyone, Dokiller here, and welcome to another Minecraft Dalek Mod video. Today I'm in Minecraft 1.12.2 with the Dalek Mod Update 48. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the TARDIS panel to create your own beacon color changer inside of your TARDIS that you can use for decoration or for whatever purpose you desire. So just to show off this feature to begin with, I'm going to walk around my console here. And here I have this TARDIS panel set up to alter the color of the beacon which acts as the time rotor inside of the TARDIS. So if I right click this to trigger it, as you can see the color of the glass block inside the console changes and so does the color of the beacon along with it. This glass block can change into one of the 16 different colors of stained glass that there are in Minecraft. And it will cycle through each of them at random each time I trigger the TARDIS panel. However, you notice that the beacon doesn't always line up with the color of the glass block. That's because there is a second glass block down below, just above the beacon. And the purpose of this is to provide actually two different colors at the same time, each of which gets altered each time we trigger the command panel. And this will give us even more colors that our beacon can be out on top here. So this can actually alter the beacon to a total of 16 by 16 different color combinations, or different shades, which is pretty cool. And again, both of these glass blocks, the one above and below, change at random to one of the 16 different colors of stained glass in Minecraft. And of course, we could expand this to hold even more glass blocks to give our beacon even more colors if we so desired. But how does this system work? Well, we're going to open up the TARDIS panel by sh having an empty hand and shift right clicking it. This will open up the TARDIS panel GUI and inside we can see what commands are in here. Now if you need an explanation of the commands that can operate in the TARDIS panel and how to use them, I have a, made a separate video dedicated entirely to that subject and I'll leave a link for you below in the description in case you want to watch that. But right now I have two set block commands in here and all that they're doing is setting down a redstone block at some other location in the world. So just set block, redstone block, and then a set of coordinates. So actually what we're using the TARDIS command panel or the TARDIS panel to, to do is simply to set down some redstone blocks to trigger a separate redstone system which can alter the colors of the glass blocks for us. So in order to see how that is done, we need to exit the TARDIS and go to this redstone system which I have built elsewhere in the world just so we don't have to see it inside the TARDIS. So exiting here on top of this other TARDIS, you can see how the system set up and then over here is an exact clone with a few changes of the system over here. So when we trigger the TARDIS panel inside of the TARDIS, it will set down a redstone block at this location. Just like that. And we have two command blocks that it will be triggering simultaneously. The first one is a very simple set block command. This sets the block right next to the command block to air. So as soon as this redstone block gets placed down, as you can see, it gets taken away again. And that is the purpose of this. The reason for this is that we can repeatedly set down a redstone block over and over again with that TARDIS panel and not have to worry about a redstone block already being here and jamming the system so that it doesn't work. Our second command block here is going to be a little more complicated and here we're running an execute command. So we're going to be running this command at a random entity with the at r, the at r identifier and we're going to set that entity specifically to an armor stand within 15 blocks of the command block. We're going to be executing at that armor stand's location a set block command and we're going to be setting down another redstone block two blocks below the armor stand. So let's see how this demonstrated. If I place a redstone block here, you'll be able to see a redstone block placed underneath one of these armor stands. This command block will take a look for one of these armor stands, select one at random, and set a redstone block two blocks underneath it. We can see this demonstrated right here. So if you look at the top of the screen, you can actually see a redstone block it placed down very briefly at some random location underneath one of the armor stands. Or at a, a two block location below one of the armor stands that is randomly selected. And then it gets taken away again for the same reason that we take away the redstone block right here so that the system doesn't get jammed and that we can use it over and over and over again. So underneath the armor stands we have two command blocks and the redstone blocks get gets placed in between. So on top, we have just a very simple command. It's again setting an air block one block below it. This removes the redstone block that gets placed here. 
And again, the purpose of that is just to clear the system so we can use it over and over again every time. The second command block, however, is once again slightly more complicated, not really. It's another set block command, and this sets down a stained glass block at the location on the council, either the top glass block or the bottom glass block. And the last part of the command is very important. This is the metadata. So, for those who don't know, stained glass in Minecraft, of course, has 16 colors, as I said earlier. And each of these colors is actually all under the same block. It has the Minecraft name and the command as stained underscore glass. And how we access the different colors is through the metadata. So each number here corresponds to a single color of the stained glass. And we can see these in the inventory. Again, this would have a metadata of 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Going all the way up to 15 for the final color of stained glass. So we have, again, 4x4 four four armor stands here. This creates 16 armor stands, which will be selected at random. Each one triggers a command block, which sets a random color of one of the 16 colors of stained glass in Minecraft. The second system is triggered simultaneously with the first and does exactly the same thing but for the glass block on the bottom or the lower part of the council underneath the platform. So I could clone this system again and alter the command panel to set a third redstone block which will set a third glass block down with a third color and alter the color of the beacon even further to give us 16 by 16 by 16 different color combinations. Now I personally thought that was overkill but you can easily expand this to do as many glass blocks as you want giving your beacon as many colors as you want all at random if you desire to do that. It's very easy to expand the system and it's very easy to create and again the result is just a random colored time rotor for my TARDIS. So once again, we're just using the TARDIS panel to set up a separate redstone system by setting down redstone blocks. And we have plenty of command blocks to delete the redstone blocks after we place them so that we can trigger the system over and over and over again as many times as we want to. So the last thing I wanted to say in this video is, of course, you can use the system of randomly selecting an armor stand and placing a block underneath it to trigger a random command block to do a random effect for just about anything. You can adapt this not just for the colors of blocks that get placed, but you could have this execute random commands for say random particle effects that you would want when you trigger the panel. To have smoke or explosion or whatever triggered randomly each time you trigger the panel. And you could do just about anything from there if you get creative in my opinion. You could do just about whatever you wanted to set random things down. And again, we're just using the random locator on the command block and armor stands set up nearby the command block. So that guys is the how you can make a color changing beacon for your own TARDIS and have it switch through a whole bunch of different colors and different color combinations merely by changing stained glass, color, color of stained glass. So, and again, you can adapt this system to just about anything you want with the random selector, which I think is pretty fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys can get the system to work if you decide to build it yourself. And I hope you guys can take this and expand it and do just about anything you want, and I think it's a great way to add some decoration and some features to your own TARDIS. So thank you as always for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one, so goodbye for now.